What's up, everyone? It's Caddy with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the bond market and the 10-year treasuries are hitting highs of over 5%, their highest levels in over 16 years since July of 2007. And I've been getting a lot of questions about the uninversion of the yield curve, which is also happening right now as we speak, as I'm recording this video that's happening right now in real time. And that uninversion, basically the spread, is up over 28%. A lot of people ask me questions around how is that uninversion happening on the way up? What does that mean? Everything is going to be broken down in this video. So hopefully by the end of these 15, 20 minutes and the presentation that I have, you will have a very clear understanding of the current state of the bond market and how that's putting more and more pressure on equities and it's going to make it even more challenging for the markets to rally in this environment. So hope you guys enjoy this video and all I'm asking in return is that you subscribe and of course drop a like on this video and link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. And of course, getting access to all the uh, members-only private videos. We got trading view charts, Excel spreadsheets that you can view and our stock reports and of course, access get access to the early uh, beta launch that we have in february of 24 that's going to be for the moneyvest platform so you can go to moneyvest.com and of course sign up for the early access over there as well so links are going to be down below and we'd love to have you on board so first thing i want to talk about is where we are currently so present day 2023 the 10-year treasury is just hitting highs of over five percent so that's really where we are and we are seeing levels that we haven't seen since July of 2007. So this right here is the last time we were pretty much at these extreme levels of interest rates, the treasury yield, basically, uh, it's kind of like a risk-free rate, or at least it was considered as a risk-free rate uh, offered by the US government, backed by the US government. Uh, and we've seen such an upshot in the overall treasuries. Uh, you can see that we have rallied over 866% since June of 2020. So that right there, that's basically the timeline since June 2020 to where we are. We've seen just a massive move to the upside now sitting at well over 5%, the same level from back in July of 2007. One more thing I want to point out is that obviously the reason why this is so interesting and so uh, equities are having a hard time to rally is because this is fixed income, right? So once you basically buy treasury bonds, you are locked in at 5%. And until maturity, you're going to yield about 5% annually, right? Until maturity, which is 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or depending on the duration of that bond. Uh, and, and at maturity, you're going to get your principal back. Now, the price of that bond, right, which is the market value of that bond, is going to fluctuate against the face value uh, based on where yields go, right? Because they're inversely correlated, right? Um, now, that doesn't mean that you are not going to get your principal back. That simply means that if you wanted to sell the bond in the secondary market early before the maturity, you're going to incur a loss because as yields have gone up, the value of that bond has decreased, right? Because there's newer bonds available with a higher yield, right? So investors are obviously going to price that appropriately as yields go up, market prices come down for the bonds. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, for the longest time, you'll notice the yields have on been on this consistent downtrend, right? Lower highs, lower lows. You can see the downtrend here in the yields, which basically means what? The bond market has done really well since 1981. This is about as far as this chart goes. So 1981, basically, you start here. Uh, and since prices and yields are inversely correlated, as yields have come down, well, if you go to TLT, TMS, some of these charts, they are going to be the exact opposite, right? They're basically moving higher and higher, making higher highs and higher lows. Up until recently, up until a few years ago, since June of 2020, the bond market has been in complete uh, complete destruction mode where we are seeing a significant sell-offs in TLT and TMF and of course a lot of other bond price ETFs as well as yields continue to see this upshot of over 800% getting up to over 5%. Now this right here is the spread right so this is the spread between the 10-year and the two-year so let me explain what that basically means. That simply means that when you take into account where the current 10-year yield is right the 10-year yield for the treasury uh, bond minus the current two-year yield, okay? Two-year yield, which is, again, just another treasury bond, but it's going to be maturing in two years. So when you take that spread, right, it, it's supposed to be positive, right? It's supposed to be positive because in a normal functioning market, the longer you go out in duration, 
the higher the risk and the more you should be compensated for that risk, right? Because it's all related to risk and reward. It's all on the risk curve. So if you are, let's say, investing your money for 10 years, 10 years out, there's a lot more unpredictiveness. I don't know if that's a word, but there's a lot of uncertainty 10 years out versus two years out, right? I mean, we can have a much better understanding of what the economy, what the world, what the market's going to look like one year from now versus 10 years from now, right? So because of that uncertainty, because of that additional risk, you should be compensated with a higher rate of return investing in 10 years, 10 year treasuries versus two years. Now, this negative number, right? It's not so much about the number itself, but it's the it's the symbol, right? The sign, whether it's plus or minus. So if it was positive, that means it's a normal functioning market where the long duration bonds, 10, 20, 30, are yielding more than short duration bonds, one, two, three. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. As I mentioned, when you're investing for the long duration, uh, the market needs to compensate you for that additional risk. So the return should be higher. But the fact that it is negative right now, and it has been negative for a very long time, I'll go over some of the timelines here, it's been well over 18 months, the yield curve has been inverted, in other words, it's been uh, negative spread, uh, that basically means the short duration of the curve, which is the two year, the three year, the one year, the six month, the shorter end of the curve, the short term, treasury bonds are yielding more in rate of return versus the long duration 10, 20, and 30. Now, what's happening is that we are now moving back to the positive territory. So this index or this basically the spread is up 29% today. Just today, it's up 29%, right? And we are now very close to zero, right? So we have come from negative 1% to now negative 0.1%. So we have moved back up to 0% level and possibly getting up to that positive territory as it should be in a normal functioning market, right? So this right here is the yield spread, right? Which is basically the 10 year versus the two year. You can see that up top, I'm taking into account the 10 year minus the two year. Now, as soon as it crosses below the red line, which is the red line over here, you can see on the chart, that is a 0% line. And as soon as it crosses below, that's the spread turning negative or the yield curve inverting. Now, every time it's happened since 1980s, a recession has followed and the markets have significantly sold off as soon as we've seen not the actual spread turning negative, but on the way back up, right? So you can see that every time this right here, negative, negative, I've kind of marked that this is 2019. And this is where we are right now. You can see the steepness of the inversion this time around compared to previous times, previous four times, right? It's nowhere near close to what we have witnessed uh, this time around, right? It's very, very steep. It's a very, very long. And it's also uh, you know, taking it's also on the way back up. But the only key difference here is that this uninversion is happening on the way up. I'll explain that what that means. But this basically is sort of like a good overview of the inversion of the yield curve and where we are currently. So you can see that back in 1980s, uh, this right here was the max drawdown in the spread. We came down to basically negative 0.469% and it lasted for about 18 months. This right here was in the 2000s, so 1990s and 2000s. You can see the date down below. Uh, lasted for about 11 months, uh, went down further than the 1990s, went down to negative 51 basis points or negative 0.51%. This right here was 07, 08, 17 months we were inverted and we were down to negative 0.221%. And this right here was during COVID, during the pandemic, for one month only, and the spread was only negative 0.05%. So very, very modest inversion for only one month before recovering back up to the positive territory. But this, this is the most brutal inversion in the yield curve and the spread going as low as negative 1%. In other words, negative 100 basis points, right? So the two-year at one point, in the past, the two-year was yielding 1%, a full 1 percentage point more than the 10-year, right? That's an insane amount of inversion, and that has lasted for 18-plus months, and we're still not there yet because we're still not above the 0% level. The moment we cross over that 0% level, then we've got an, a yield curve which is no longer inverted. The spreads are back in the positive territory, and right now it's at negative 11 basis points or negative 0.1%. Now, why is this important? The reason why this is important is because recessions and stock market sell-offs and, and the problems in the economy don't happen on the way down and when we are inverted. They happen on the way up. They happen when we are uninverting, right? This is the process of uninverting because we are 
going from an inversion back to being non-inverted. So basically, it's on the way back up that the problems begin. And you can see that very clearly on this chart. This is December 2000. S&P 500, I couldn't really find the chart from 1980s, but you can see this is December 2000. And this right here is December 2000. You can kind of correlate to these, you know, timestamps and you can figure out that, okay, when the uninversion really started, we saw the stock market basically uh, selling off over here. This is June of 2007 when the market started selling off pretty aggressively. And this was June of 2007 when the uninversion started, we saw the market sell off. And this right here was March of 2020 when the uninversion took place over here is when the markets really started selling off. Now, I'm not saying that this uninversion right here is going to lead another market sell off over here, but historically and statistically speaking, that's exactly how it's worked. Now, just because it's worked in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but just something to keep in mind because this uninversion is happening right now and we're most likely going to turn positive here very soon um, between the two-year, the 10-year, the spreads and all the treasury market. Now, the volatility is also up 23 right now. It's up over 6%. So that's another really, really important metric to watch. The moment we get up to over 30, I think it's going to be very interesting from a technical analysis standpoint, from a market perspective, you know, dollar cost averaging perspective. So I'm really going to be watching 30. And right now on the day, it's up over 6% back up to over 23. Uh, and this right here is the bond market volatility as well. So you know how we have the VIX, right? So we look at the volatility index for the S&P 500. This is the move index for the bond market. And this also goes back to as far as 2003, 2004. And you'll notice that every time we see a massive spike in volatility for bonds, the bond market continues to sell off and the yields move higher. This is 2007, 2008. Uh, this was basically bond market volatility was really, really high. Um, and as a result, the yields were moving higher, prices were coming down, and then eventually yields started rolling over during that recession and bond prices recovered, yields started to roll over. And right now we are once again at these levels. So this right here is where we are with this massive move to the upside, 135. So we are getting back up to this level of 175, 205. The only difference though, the only difference, uh, I mean, ideally you would, you would think that this right here is a buying opportunity. This right here is where you start to go long on bonds. The only problem here is, and that's the difference, that's the difference maker, is this. This is the chart, which is the uninversion that's happening on the way up. Uninversion happening on the way up, which I can't make sense of. I can't. So this is has to do with some macroeconomic challenges, has to do with some fiscal challenges as well. So I have no doubt that uh, uh, that that this is going to be quite interesting from a from a macroeconomic perspective. And let me explain what I mean by that. So when the uninversion started. In July of 1990, this right here is the massive uninversion, right? We're moving back higher on the yield curve. The spreads are turning positive. Look what the 10-year yield did. This is July of 1990. They started selling off, right? And that makes sense. That makes complete sense, right? Because the two-year was yielding more than the 10-year, right? And they both start dropping, right? Because we're in a recession, right? So interest rates are starting to get cut. They're starting to come down right? And we are seeing the two-year move faster than the 10-year and they're both moving down, right? So this uninversion is happening on the way down. Come over to the next time, December 2000. This right here, uninversion, right? We're seeing that spread turn positive. Look at where the 10-year yield was. December of 2000 starts selling off, starts coming down. Let's come over to the next one, right? June of 07, 17 months of uninversion, excuse me, 17 months of that spread being negative and then starts uninverting. So this right here is the massive move back higher. So the spread start, start turning positive and look what happens to the 10-year yield it is coming down. It's selling off, right? This right here is another instance of March, 2020, right? The uninversion's happening, the spread's turning positive. Look what happens to the 10-year yield. It is selling off, right? It's coming down. Now, this is the only thing that I can't seem to make sense of. Now, the uninversion is happening. We are moving back higher. So we're almost positive, right? So it's, uh, it's on its way up and it's happening on the way up. The 10-year yield is also moving higher while the uninversion is happening. So this is the only anomaly that we're dealing with right now in the last 40 plus years. And it's happening on the back of a lot of fiscal risk. It's happening on the back of you know, just just a lot of supply of bonds. Like there's a lot of issuance of corporate debt, treasury debt, and there's not enough buyers, which is pushing the yields higher. Uh, but at the same time, 
the uninversions happening. So in other words, what happened in the past was the two-year tenure, the treasury bonds, they were selling off. The short term was selling off faster than the long term. And now what's happening is they're both moving higher. The 10-year is moving higher faster compared to the two-year. And now they are, we're now starting to uninvert on the way up. And this, I, I, I don't know if it's going to be even more catastrophic than what we have witnessed in the past less catastrophic or it's not going to mean anything i mean it's it's a, there's there's a lot of macro puzzle to solve here because as i show you like this is happening for the first time in i think forever like for the first time like we're uninverting on the way up because the bond market's been on such a solid bull market for the last several decades and the yields have been coming down but now we have shot up to the upside and um uh, and this is where we are, present day 2023, where yields continue to move up. They're sitting at over 5%. And uh, of course, the uninversions happening at the same time. So this right here was from uh, Nancy Davis, portfolio manager at Quadratic Interest Rate Volatility Inflation Hedge. And they mentioned that I think we're in a new era where having bonds is not safe. Bonds are not risk-free. The 30-year treasury lost more than the NASDAQ in 2022. Um, and they also mentioned that rising treasury yields are also making risky investments less attractive. As I mentioned before, yields on fixed income instruments are exceeding the yield on S&P 500 company earnings by an increasingly wider margin, which obviously is is hurting the attractiveness of stocks. Uh, and it just doesn't make sense to own equities at elevated prices with the 10 year treasury yielding at near 5 percent. So that's, you know, opportunity costs and things that we have already talked about. And for the past three months, the 10-year treasury yield went up 108 basis points, uh, which implies the S&P 500 should drop by three points. And what they mean is that for every 40 basis point increase, so that's also a very interesting data point, is that for every 40 basis point increase in the long 10-year treasury yield, theoretically lowers S&P 500 multiple by one point. So right now we're sitting at 1934 for every 40 basis point increase in the yield, uh, the multiple should get dropped by one. So it should be at 18, 17, 16 if the 10 year continues to move up 40, 40, 40 uh, in the future. So so that's what really, you know, is going to be more and more interesting from a market perspective. I mean, futures market right now are getting just destroyed at the moment. I mean, we're down for the NASDAQ on the 74 basis points. Tesla's down one and a half. Uh, you know, NVIDIA is down 1.3. Apple is selling off 1.4. QQQs are down a little bit over 72 basis points. And SPY is down over 61. So it's very, very clear. I mean, the 10 year is, you know, is a leading indicator for the market right now. The 10 year is what's really driving the market right now. Um, and until that starts to pause and starts to roll over, I think we're in a very tough environment uh, from a from a equity standpoint. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to, again, break down everything about the bond market so it's clear with everyone and, and where we are. But uh, I'm open to, you know, your comments and your suggestions and whatnot and, and your ideas, basically, and why that, that uninversion is happening on the way up and how that could uh, really affect the markets moving forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, you found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 16% annual discount available uh, till the end of this month. And as always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.